here's my series on Twitter quotes. Based on um, something I wrote a while ago about my first weight set. So how I started lifting was um, I used to take these uh, college level textbooks that my dad had bought from the flea market. You know, we had hundreds of these at my house. These were advanced texts on physics, chemistry, biology. I'd put them, I'd use them for pushing and pulling, okay? And when I needed more resistance, as I got stronger really quick, I would put the books together, use my mom's scarf, you know, wrap them around, tie them up, put four, five, six books together. I'd push, I'd pull, I'd do pullovers, I'd do stuff like that. When I wanted to do exercises, uh, which required me to lie down, I'd get my mom's coffee table, I'd put it in my room, and uh, you know, I'd use that as, as a bench press. So that's how I started uh, doing this thing. I thought that was, it was interesting uh, to put, put that into a Twitter quote because the thing is, you know, if you really, really are serious about, you know, doing something, anything, uh, you'll find a way. Here's an old video of me doing my uh, first 500 pound bench press. Remember that it was 500 pounds, not 495, because that was a heavier bar. It was a customized bar. Uh, the interesting thing here is that it took me four to five months of specific preparation to get this done. And the main thing that I focused on uh, was technique. Okay, technique, I feel that technique is that important. Okay, doing, there, there's a huge difference in the weights you will lift if you do them right or in a certain particular way. This, the ways that we've discovered empirically through observation, through you know trial and error that we've uh, most elite lifters have come to conclude as the ideal technique. Learning technique from an elite lifter would have probably helped me do probably 600 pounds. I'm not I'm not kidding. Uh, it, it's that valuable to have a coach. If I had had a coach, I would have broken this. Uh, of course, I probably would have done this for five reps. Uh, but you know, I found what I could online, and I used uh, all the technique tips that they had given online. And uh, I managed to take my bench press from 400 pounds to 500 pounds, simply based on um, using or applying the ideas from other coaches or other lifters that were better than me. Okay, saved me a ton of time. If I had used my own trial and error, who knows, I would have never probably gotten it. This is why it is so useful, not important, useful to hire a coach for yourself. Here's a picture uh, that you can see of when I had a really low body fat. I, I was around 10%, sometimes under, sometimes a little over, but I averaged 10% for four and a half years. The thing I remember the most about this were the cheat days. Because I was so strict with my eating and so strict with my training, uh, basically two hours a day, five to six days a week, and only 1,800 calories a day, uh, five odd days a week, that I could really indulge on the weekends. So I would take my calories up to 20,000 calories a day okay on the weekends so the first day of the weekend would be about 20,000 calories second day probably 10 to 15,000 calories because I wasn't that hungry and that allowed me to really like you know have a lot of fun with food and drinking and everything else that I did um, so yeah it was a really enjoyable time uh, it was Christmas every weekend as one of my clients at the time used to say to us and it was fun but the thing is the sacrifice was made during the week there's always going to be some level of sacrifice you need to make to be able to attain something that uh, you know gives you a high degree or provides a high degree of pleasure. So you're not gonna achieve that unless you're willing to sacrifice. It's very similar to how uh, you know, dopamine goes up when you experience pain uh, because uh, there becomes a context, a relative context to the pain. So everything that you do that is mildly pleasurable becomes maximally pleasurable. Okay, so food becomes much more enjoyable if you restrict yourself from the food during the week. Got it? That's how you have really fun cheat weekends. What I really believe in is uh, doing something physical every single day. Okay, now this never means you have to lift weights every day. This never means you have to lift weights hard every day. Uh, this simply means do something physical for your body every day. In the same way that you do something uh, for uh, you, you know, your body in terms of feeding it, you need to do something for your body in terms of exerting it. Okay, basically there are two um, conduits, right? There's the energy in, there's the energy out. Uh, you want to stimulate both every day in some way, mild or harsh, uh, you know, difficult or easy. And uh, you know, if you're gonna do training every day, my recommendation is hard, easy, hard, easy, but do it every day, man. But the reason is 
It keeps you super disciplined, okay? It creates structure, regimentation, routine, and this all comes through repetition of um, a daily pattern, okay? Or, or a daily sequence of activities. Uh, you'll be better off for it. Uh, you'll have less chaos to deal with in your life. It's very, very beneficial. And if you don't, if you want to have fun, well, what you know you can do is regulate that as well to a degree. You know, how I do it is I like to you know break all the rules on the weekend. So one to two days, you know, you break all the rules that you abided by during the week. I think that will give you the ultimate sort of balance. And it's ultimately also healthier in the long run, okay? You don't want to just stick to one exact routine for too long because you accumulate the negatives. Strength and conditioning. Basically, this is how the fitness industry has dichotomized um, fitness itself, okay? They've created a binary um, where strength training has been separated from the conditioning for the strength training, okay? And I think this happened mostly when the jogging craze, you know, uh, became popular in the 1970s. So people thought, you know, weight training and jogging were somehow either distinct, separate, complementary, non-complementary. Maybe they, they thought they were like uh, opponent processes. I don't know how people mostly are viewing it. What we do know is that currently fitness pros will promote the idea that there's strength training and then there's conditioning and that is completely a crock of shit. Well, to understand this better, all you need to do is look into how energy systems operate, okay? There are feedback loops, okay? Look into lactic acid, pyruvate, how all that, you know, feeds into uh, opponent energy systems short-term, long-term, I don't want to get into the details. The thing is that they are not distinct, they're one thing, okay? There's only strength, and then it is how it is expressed, okay? Intensity and repetition are typically inversely related. So if you want to produce what you call conditioning, you, you are still doing strength training, you're just doing repetitious strength training. Got it? So they're one thing, and our gym, okay, in Dubai, uh, we realize this and uh, you know the philosophy we have and the system we have is based upon this idea at its core I prefer to say strength is the ontological primitive got it. That is the foundational quality everything else is an expression of strength Pain is the path pleasure is the destination old quote old idea and inspired by ancient wisdom um, ignoring pain uh, at the expense of only seeking pleasure uh, results in more pain uh, in life because you're not going to live a very fulfilled life and you know you can understand this forget the forget the philosophy of it okay let's see even from a neurobiological perspective you can understand it like this that if you don't experience pain your pleasure has no context okay if you just seek pleasure and live a pleasurable lifestyle the dopamine release that comes from it or the dope or the incentive by salience that you are seeking actually provides diminishing returns okay in terms of enjoyability let's say so you're going to um have a less pleasurable you're gonna need more and more of a hit okay you're gonna have to have more and more of a stimulus very similar to some sort of, a, I guess you could say, drug addiction. Uh, if you only seek pleasure, pain is the not only the context provider, pain is the thing that gives reference uh, to the pleasure, okay? So if you're not seeking out pain, and by the way, you know, seeking out pain in and of itself and overcoming the pain is pleasurable, okay? It's probably more pleasurable because of how uh, dopamine and the VTA system um, operate and respond to pain. So, you know, pain is the key to all progress. It is not pleasure. Pleasure is what you get uh, from accepting, embracing, and indulging in pain, okay? Pleasure is uh, seeking pleasure for the sake of pleasure, which we do now because we live in a completely, we live in a world where we're constantly in, uh, you know, scroll mode, okay? We're constantly seeking little mini hits of dopamine from our social media, and uh, we've uh, somehow carried this over to our, our, our real lives, okay? You know, look at the apps we use to order food, look at the apps we use to find um, mates. It's all become um, this sort of search for a quick dopamine fix of the day. Long-term thinking is pretty much dissolved and uh, divorced from uh, the human experience right now, and uh, I don't need to present the stats, but the stats are really bad. Uh, when it comes to depression, when it comes to suicide, when it comes to drug addiction, everything's way up.
And this is no coincidence because the correlation with social media, the social media world is very, very direct, very, very strong. There's this entire um, construct or narrative uh, in, in not just in the fitness industry, it's worldwide basically, the entire health industry, even the medical industry, about the importance of diet, okay? I don't want to get into every single myth about it, so let's just keep it to, to one dimension, fat loss. Anyone that uses diet to lose fat gains it back. This is correct 97% of the time. That should tell you that the idea of dieting to lose fat is broken and wrong. But the world does not want to accept this because the world, or normal average people, think in something called first order effects, okay? So the food that goes in uh, is the only way they can think instead of what the body does to the food that goes in, which is a second order effect, understanding. And most, uh, you know, people that think about things, okay, they understand that the second order effect is the effect that you need to worry about. Okay, it's the carryover from process one uh, to process two, okay, and, and how they're causally connected or, you know, even correlated uh, tightly to produce uh, the overall uh, general effect, which is where training comes in. Training or exercise or how you move or your activity levels dictate what your body does with or to food. Food in and of itself is neutral. Okay, food cannot do a thing to the body. So it cannot create a certain physiological response uh, or response or uh, genetic output. Okay, the food is just pure neutral input. Okay, what gives that input a certain output is the activity of the organism. Okay, so stop thinking first order effect because it's obvious if we stare the facts in the face that dieting doesn't work. Everyone that is overweight has dieted multiple times in their life, correct? The people that actually know the least about calories or the least about dieting are the ones that are just staying lean. Because those people are the ones that are either not addicted to the dopamine rush of food or they're naturally active, okay? Or they are inadvertently active, you know, sub unknowingly active. Okay, so activity will always be the differentiator and the thing that creates the difference because it's the activity, it's the, it's the signal and noise. Okay, diet or food intake, or pure calories is just noise. To derive signal from that, you need purpose. Okay, the organism needs purpose and the purpose of every organism on the planet, the primary function for which the brain evolved was movement. Movement is how we interact with the environment. It is how we impinge upon the environment, okay? It is the language that we organisms speak with the environment. Movement is that important. For more info, visit www.richandfit.com.